Hi everyone, this is Misha, Sacred Healing Journeys. I am here to present some information, some wisdom, some of my own personal experience on the heart chakra, the Anahata, or in Sakem we call this the Ab Shafat, Shafat meaning chakra. Um, the heart chakra, the place that we all want to get to, open, activate, be in. Easier said than done, right? Because this is, I feel, a complex chakra. And that is because there is your fourth dimensional heart here, but a little bit further up between the heart and the throat is the higher heart. We, we work on the throat before we come back and work on the higher heart. It's like kind of behind there. It's of a higher dimension. So we have to go from the heart, then do the work on the throat, and then as we've gone up through the Kundalini channel, the higher heart is another deeper, higher aspect of the heart. And so when we've worked on the heart, there's still a ways to go is what I'm trying to say. But the heart is a very important chakra and what it usually holds is the wounds and the hurt of all of the kind of issues that we have um, experienced from age zero to 21, so those first three chakras. Not always because, of course, you know, things happen to us later in life. Life happens. There's loss, there's grief, there's abandonment, there's betrayal. And that stuff all comes in and just kind of adds to the heart walls that we've already built over time um, between zero and 21. And so the more we experienced in our younger years and the more thick and kind of um, dense those heart walls are, the more we, if we add and we have other things happen, then it just becomes... Um, it becomes a really important place but a really challenging place that can take some time to move through. It doesn't mean that we have to finish working through the heart before we get to the throat because like I have said before, all of these energy centers are really linked and we might do you know, a good deal of work here and then we might feel called to move up to the throat and then we have to sort of go down to the heart again. And as we work on the throat, the heart gets to open and clear more. As we work on the solar plexus, the heart starts to make way for the work we're going to do there and starts to open and clear more. The heart is um, a beautiful chakra once we've actually got it open because on its higher positive frequency, it radiates compassion and love and forgiveness. Now, in the Egyptian traditions, it is Mat who weighs our heart when we die um, and makes sure that it's as light as a feather. And if it is not, we are usually one to come back and try that again. But, of course, there's cause and effect and karma that comes in. And so as we, we come back again, we have... Um, this cause and effect energy that we have to work through. So it actually doesn't get easier, even though we've had more experience, it gets harder sometimes. The physical aspects of a blocked heart. Well, if we do have heart chakra concerns, then the physical places that this can show up if we leave it and if we don't do um, you know, the inner work to unblock the heart, um, well, it is obviously the heart um, organ itself. It is the circulatory system as well within the body which is connected to the heart. It is our lungs. It is our breasts. It is our diaphragm. So the breath is a really big um, part of the heart and the heart is actually the element of air. So as you can see why it's the air is life force and prana is our vitality and so the breath brings that in and expels what we don't need out so the heart is really important and I am a facilitator of a breathwork tradition called rebirthing which is a heart opening breath 
And in that, I use cacao medicine because that is also a heart-opening medicine. So it's very much focused on clearing the wounds and the traumas out of the heart and opening up this gateway, this beautiful portal. Also, if we have heart issues, then um, this is also the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the thymus gland, which is up uh, a bit more usually at the higher heart, but this also is the gland that governs. So... Um, Obviously, we have all heard of the notion that you can die of a broken heart. When a partner, a long-term partner dies and then slowly after they are the one that's left um, living may die. Grief gets stored here. Betrayal, abandonment. Um so much unexpressed sadness, loneliness. This is all, you know, how we kind of, the, the emotions that gets that stored here, abandonment, um, betrayal, loneliness, lack of connection. So it's really the core wound that we hold will often have a place here, even though they would have started, you know, in the ages and the cycles of life that are governed by the lower three chakras, they will be stored here and we will build heart walls. And so there can be multiple ways that we identify with um, this wound. We may over identify with our victim state and, and be very needy and be very controlling of others because obviously relationships as well, like even though sacral is our relationship centre, well, how we operate in that is really there's a, there's a massive link between the sacral and the heart chakra. So we can stay really victimised. We can um, not trust others to do right by us and so want to control a lot of things in our life. The martyrdom kind of construct is a big one in the heart. But we also hold a lot of fears here too, fears of intimacy, of being seen for who we really are and all of our all of our hurts, all of our all of us, all of our pain, fear of um, closeness, fear of commitment, fear of letting someone really deeply in, fear of sharing our heart because we might get hurt. Especially if we were hurt when we were younger, we can push people away or hurt them before they hurt us. That is a common thing that I have seen with people who have heart chakra issues. Or we um, we haven't done our inner child work because I, I have experienced that with working with people and with my own inner child work that there is an aspect of that inner child or multiple aspects that still live within the heart that need to be integrated. And then there's boundaries as, as well, like with that second chakra, boundaries and relationships are, at play but the heart chakra like we can just let people in too much and then get hurt over and over again and then wonder why we're always constantly getting hurt and then we're getting pissed off and resentful because we've just let we haven't had any discernment because the heart is a beautiful place of discernment to trust the heart but when people say in the spiritual community follow your heart that is what we need to do but if your heart is so blocked up then you won't know what your heart tells you, and you will often listen to the mind. So this is why it's really important to do that because the heart chakra is also part of our astral body. The astral body is full of our thoughts, our overthinking and you know, our negative thoughts, um, also our positive thoughts, but also our unexpressed emotions, everything that's been blocked in, blocked in and, and um, suppressed and unexpressed. And so this is why if you have a lot of nightmares or um, a lot of crazy kind of interfering kind of dreams, this can also indicate that you have to do some clearing, some purifying of your, of your thoughts. If you have jealousy, bitterness, um, hatred in your heart, if you are a very unforgiving person, or are you really finding it hard to forgive someone? Because at a higher plane, the heart is very compassionate. It's obviously very loving. It's very forgiving. But then on the highest plane, when we get to the higher heart, this is a sacred marriage of the higher mind and um, the higher heart. So it's together in there. 
that we find this um, really wise neutrality. But how do we get there when the heart is so blocked? Well, one thing that happens time and time again and um, with many people that I work with, but also I've done this, I've done this too because it's taught to us through spiritual um, practices a lot of the time, especially in the new age of bypassing, we don't accept our darkness. We don't even want to sit with it. And if we have a dark thought, we push it down. How? I can't think that. How can I think that? So we haven't acknowledged the darkness. So a lot of the time people cannot open their heart. They wonder why they can't stay in their heart. It's because they can't accept themselves. If if they can't accept themselves, they definitely are not going to love themselves because they don't accept their own darkness. This is particularly prevalent for people who have had a lot of trauma. They may start to awaken awaken spiritually. They're, They're really, really connected to the light within them. Um, or, or wanting to be light because they know that they're, you know, a beautiful light worker soul, but they can't quite face and confront their shadow, the darker aspects. And if they can't confront that, then they really can't really come into embodying their light anyway because they won't love themselves. And you need to love yourself before you can truly know that you are a being of um, of light and you and you f- truly know that you have you know source guiding you and 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 divinity guiding you you're being guided by your teams your your higher ancestors your higher dimensional aspects your higher self so if we can't accept that darkness then we are bypassing that shadow and that means there's still you know like density and stuff stuffed down here from the lower three dimensions the lower three chakras now this is not easy because like i said a lot of um, teachings in the spiritual community teach us that we have to uh, kill the ego that we have to dissolve our darkness that we have to purify our shadow but really what we have to do is allow our dark and light to integrate into neutrality. We need that to marry in and thread in and integrate. We need our darker aspects sometimes when we um, need to be a warrior, when we need to not take shit from people, when we need to step into our power. And we need our lighter aspects when we want to hold grace and compassion and be very, very gentle and loving, at least while we're in this physical plane. This is the realm that we're in. It's the middle way. Buddha talked about the middle way. And so that is the way to opening the heart. And so I feel like this is where a lot of people get stuck. This is certainly where I have been stuck. Now, doing some work on the heart and then moving up to the throat, if you haven't realized that when you're at the heart doing that work, you certainly will when you get to the throat because this is uh, in Sikkim, this is um, the Ashashte Shafat is governed by Maat, goddess Maat. And she is a goddess of justice and truth. So seeing the truth of yourself, seeing the truth of the cosmos, seeing the truth of yourself, your darkness, and then those two come together so that you have a, an, a wiser, more um, open full understanding of yourself and your place in the cosmos. You can't have a full understanding of your place in the cosmos if you haven't confronted your own darkness. So a lot of this stuff can come up when you get to the throat if it doesn't come up at the heart. And in fact, often in um, Sikkim, we don't just clear the throat without having a look at other energy centers and seeing what it, what is entangled there. Because if we have throat chakra issues, there's a good chance that we have stuff down uh, in the lower chakras and also past life issues potentially. And we haven't been able to confront the truth of who we are. But obviously I'll talk more about um, the Ashashte Shafat or the throat chakra when I get to that in this series.
I'd love to know your experiences with your heart chakra, with your healing. How is it going? Do you find it challenging? What is the most challenging part of working with your heart chakra? And maybe if you're finding it so challenging, I dare say that that's a signal that there's still work to do in the lower chakras and facing your darkness and accepting yourself truly for all of your wounding, for all of your shadow. You can only change what you first accept because if we don't accept, then we're in resistance. And if we're in resistance, we can't flow through to change what's available for us. The universe won't bring that to us. We won't manifest it because there's too much resistance. So I hope that this has been a support and I will see you next time. Sending you lots of love.